Okay guys, this is a quick little tutorial hopefully on how to do like a not all knotted up kind of idea that I had. Um, now I've seen similar things to this. This kind of inspired me. Usually people will do three strands and braid them, but I just wanted to knot them. When I was younger, I used to just take two strands of yarn and just, just knot it. And as you can see, that's what I did on the end. So I wanted to show how I kind of did that. I kept it very simple and it's using the spool loom. And you could probably use any other pieces of loom you want. You could even do a flat panel. I decided I wanted to use my spool loom because it doesn't get used that often. Now, the first question you have is how thick do you want it? The one I did, this one with it being thick, I used this side. But I wanted to make it a little thinner, so I'm actually going to use this side this time in order to do it. Now pretty much I just did an e-wrap knit all the way through. You can decide to change it up. And what I also noticed is when I did the first one, I ended up needing about double what I thought I would need if that makes any sense. So if you want a 12 inch long band basically then you would probably have to do 24 inches of an actual excuse me a piece of a tube or something to tie together. So I'm gonna make a mini version of this so I just want you to keep that in mind that I'm gonna do a smaller version of this to show you the basic technique and then when you go to make your own it's gonna vary based on whether you want it to be more used as a necklace or as like a headband so that's kind of something you can choose. So what we're going to do is I got some variegated yarn here. I just grabbed two pieces of uh, two different color yarns. I really wasn't too worried about color or anything like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the drawstring cast on on the top. But what I so I'm going to make a I'm going to make sure I have at least 12 inches of string that I'm going to end up dropping down into there. Oops, excuse me. I want a long enough tail because these tails are what we're going to tie together later. So you want them to be long enough. So we're going to drop this through. Now we can still do the drawstring even with this being on the bottom. All we're going to do, I'm giving myself some extra, is you're just going to hold the bottom string as if it was doing the drawstring and then work your way back and forth, which pretty much means you'll end up, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of creating a point because you have to go back and forth. And then you're going to bring it across the front. I mean, you don't have to. You can do a regular knit. I just chose to do it this way. And again, I have my string down here that I can pull. And again, you're looking for wherever there are two, just like we do a regular drawstring cast on. And again, you don't have to. This is just what I chose. And again, we're getting back to the beginning. <clears throat> so once you get that, you push them down. And now you basically have to decide you know, are you going to do basic e-wrap, are you going to do a garter stitch, chunky stitch, it's whatever you want to do. I'm just going to keep it as e-wrap because it's faster. And we're just going to e-wrap around and then knit over. And I usually knit the last one in place to lock it in as I go around the other ones. So this is all I'm going to do. And it's a pretty quick process usually and then just push it down and you can use your string that you have here at the bottom to kind of pull it and as you see when you pull that it's closing off the, it from the top. Now you can choose to do basic e-wrap for the first because you're going to need at least two <clears throat> two things to tie together or you can decide to switch it up. Like I said you can do a all garter stitch, you can do a tight stitch, it's whatever you want. That's what the basic idea is. And again, we're just going to keep working this. And once I get this one done, I'm going to go ahead and do a second color and do the same length as I just did. So we'll go ahead and do those two parts. Go ahead and keep knitting this off, and I'll come back to show you how to take it off the spool loom, which is basically like we do with hats and such anyway. So this is part one. Part one is making yourself two cords that we can tie together. Okay, so I finished and I'm getting ready to take this off the spool loom. Again, we just have our cord. Again, you can choose what stitch you want to do. And using two different colors, you can use two different thickness yarn. This is really just the basic idea so you know how to start. But it's definitely something that you can modify and change up to anything that you want. Another thing you can do if you're using the smaller side, because it drops down to, out of a bigger hole, you could even add beads like you've seen me do in other videos. And then that would make it another little cool aspect when you're doing the process. I wouldn't recommend too much beads going from this side down because the, the hole that it would have to come out with is smaller. So I'd only use beads if you're using the smaller side that comes out to the bigger. So here's our first.
cord that we want to do. I actually made, I actually have the other one and I'll explain in a minute. So all I'm going to do when I take this off is I actually just do the flat, I'm just doing the knit bind off. I'm not, I don't need it to be too fancy, so I'm just moving it over to the next loop, binding it off, keeping my working yarn kind of in front of the process here. And just moving it over, doing the knit bind off, which I can link to if you're not too familiar with that. And that's all I'm doing, because it's not about how fancy it is taken off. I mean, we're going to be knotting these up, so we're not actually going to see that that much. Okay, and we do the last one over here. Get a little tug. And now we're going to cut our strand. Remember, I kept it about 12 inches, which may change. Um, so I'm just going to make sure I find the right one. Come down. Snip it, and then that one's out of the way. Okay, oops, sorry about that. So we take this off, and we want to put our string through there. You can use a crochet hook. I just don't have one out, so I'm not using a crochet hook. Oh, get in there. And of course it's going to fight me. Get in the loop. Normally, like I said, you would use a crochet hook. Okay, so we just pull that through and tighten it up and there's one of our cords and i already have a cord this is actually the cord i used if you saw my blog about the curtain drawback a curtain tie back this is actually that i'm going to use it for this project as well but so that shows you that this project that we're doing for the all knotted up you can do these easy very easily cords to use to tie back your curtain or you could actually do a knotted one like I'm going to show you, and use that to tie back your curtain for something different. So we're going to move on to the next step, which I have to set my camera up in a little different angle, and then I'll show you that. Okay guys, so the next step, we're going to tie the two ends together. Now as you can see, I got them both belt the same length. We're going to tie these two ends together. I think it's just a regular knot like you would normally do. Oh, come on. Let's try this again. It's one of those days, there's a lot of yarn, so it's kind of Okay, so we're just going to tie these together as close as you can, as you can see. And I would give it another knot. And tie it tight. Now what you want to do now is check your string. As you notice, I have more of the blue than the pink. So I want to make sure I cut that so that they're even. Okay, and now what we're going to do is you can choose whether to start knotting this up or this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to knot this part up, which means I'll show you part of that. All we're going to do with this part is you're just going to keep knotting. However, whatever knot you choose. If you know fancier knots, go ahead and do them as well. I'm going to turn this around so it's a little faster. So all I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm just knotting the yarn to create that kind of texture that we had that I, you saw on the other one. So that's all we're doing is knotting it up. And again, this is something I used to do as a kid. So, I mean, and I thought it was really cool. And it would just give it a little different look. And it's something your kids can help out with. This is a very, I would say, simple process that kids might like because it doesn't require a lot of steps. It's make two cores, knot them together. So, that's all we're doing. Now, you can choose whether you want this to be knotted all the way down like, and keep going to the process until you're at the very bottom. But as you see, it kind of makes that little... Just something a little different on the end. Now, when you're done doing whatever side, like I said, I would keep going with the knitting or the knotting. Sorry. When you're done with the one side, you're gonna need something heavy to put on top of it. I have a case of CDs. You want it to kind of stay in place. It'll still come out some, but you just need it to be sturdy on a table. Now, let me see if I can. All we're gonna do again is we're just gonna knot these two together. Now, this is a choice where you gotta decide how tight you want to knot it. Do you want to do loose knots like this? So you have like a loop or do you want to go as close in as you can to knot it i'm going to do a little closer knots i'm really going to try to knot it as tight as i can and this is all it's doing is just creating it's just a simple process of knotting the yarn the strips up that's why it will definitely change shape depending on what yarns you use what stitches you use i mean there's so much you can do and again we're just basic knotting and i'm using these two different colors so that you can see them better and you can give it a little tug and you can see that's what we're getting. It's just a simple process that if you do it long enough, it could be a necklace, it could be a headband, it could be a curtain tie back. The possibilities are endless. I mean, it's just a different cord. If you want, you can do three of these 
and braid them if you know how to braid but I know some people are like I don't know how to braid so I'm always like well most of us we tie our shoes we know how to knot so I thought doing something like this would be a very basic basic process for somebody so we're getting towards the end I just want to give it one more knot if I can as tight as we can okay that one kind of where's my other part here I want that one to come through a little more if I can. There we go. And that's all you're gonna do is you're gonna keep knotting it to get it the way you want. Like this, oh, I gotta re knot this one. This one didn't come up the way it was supposed to. Get in there. Okay. Now, once you get it the way you want to knot, like I said, this is our cord. You got a little knot there. You're gonna knot these two together the bottom end. You're going to knot the bottom end together to lock it in place. So go ahead and knot it twice to lock it in place. Now the other thing you're going to do, you can take it off of that. Now you can check over here and again, my pink is shorter than my blue. I'm going to cut that first so that it's even. And then I'm going to continue the same process of just knotting it, which means I can put it back under there if I want. I'm just going to continue knotting like I did at the top. And again, it's going to be up to you how far down you want to knot it. I'm just giving it a few knots just to let you see. Okay, so if we went ahead and knotted a few. So there becomes your knotted, simple knotted cord that you can take these strands on the end when you're done. If you're knotting them all, tie them around, make it a necklace, maybe hang a pendant or something off of it. Or once you get it knotted, depending on the size, it can become a headband with this showing up at the top. And again, I just picked two different color yarns. Um, I do plan on trying to do the same idea with a brown and like kind of a whiter color to use more as a necklace for myself. But this is just the idea. And again, you can do this and you can use this to tie back curtains. You can use this for, I mean, this is small enough that if I wanted to, it could be like a funky bracelet. It actually is a pretty good length for like a funky bracelet. And you can pretty much do a lot what you want. It's just a basic... That's why I call it all knotted up, basically. If you know different knots, which I don't, you could probably have a lot of fun with this project. It could be something that would be great to make the cords, take them to like the Boy Scout troop and say, hey, practice your knots and see what kind of cool thing they could come up with for you. So that is my simple project of the day, I guess, is an all knotted up project where you just take two, sh two cords and you tie them up and see how they look. And again, do it as a braid if you want to use three. That's anything that you can modify with. So have a great day everyone. I'd love to see all your knotted up projects when you're done.